Recording. Yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's been recording. Yeah. It's recording. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's recording. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's recording. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's recording. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to turn off my volume so um because I'm hearing echoing and it might be because I'm like the host of this and there's that meeting in there so I'm going to shut everything down in here okay because cause Are both of these speakers on? There may be an issue here. Is oh, the fine. volume here? Because I'm fine, fine. There's an echoing issue. Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it was this one. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, all right. All righty. How are you doing? Thank you. Always good to see you. Guys, enjoy the meeting. There's coffee right here. Grab some. Yes, sorry. Okay. So, okay, so welcome to the first uh, Crypto Cafe of uh, 2023. So, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have uh, to have our new uh, uh, faculty member here, um, Veronica Kuta, who will talk about two systems and ZK snarks. Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about proof systems and uh, ZK snarks. And when the author and the book is the following. So we can open ZK snarks, so we will uh, explain a little bit further what ZK snarks are from uh, different underlying uh, classical proof systems. So we can either obtain ZK snarks from inter uh, interactive proofs or from uh, probabilistically checkable proofs or from interactive oracle proofs or from interactive oracle proofs of proximity or from linear. PCPs, linear um, probabilistic checkable proofs. And um, so the idea is that we uh, first uh, take one such um, mathematical proof systems, then we apply a cryptographic compiler on it, and we obtain a succinct uh, argument system. So I will also uh, let you explain what's a succinct argument system. Succinct basically is a proof where the proof length is much shorter than in the classical. Uh, Proof systems, zero knowledge proof systems. Actually, I um, I don't need to, uh, need to look in the very um, details in this scheme. I just wanted to, to to show you there is actually a myriad of possible zk snark constructions from different proof systems, and uh, there is also one of our papers which is currently under submission. We are awaiting um, notification today, actually. If the paper will be accepted, that maybe it's now or later in the seminar, I can give a presentation on, on the details of the paper. It's uh, this one. Um, it's a ZK snark from uh, lattices from LPCP. Okay. So, um, uh, proof systems. Um, uh, we will start first with interactive proofs. And interactive proofs enable a uh, prover to Convince a verifier to, uh, to prove to a verifier that the prover has performed uh, 
to request of computation, computation correctly. So for instance, we can assume the following uh, scenario. Let's assume a client who stores some data on the cloud server and uh, wants a guarantee that the cloud provider performs particular computations requested by the, uh, uh, by the client correctly. So the, uh, in order to get this confirmation from the approval with the cloud provider, the verifier can send several questions to the, uh, to the, uh, to the approval and the approval will, will respond uh, correspondingly. The verifier can challenge the prover by sending some random values and ask the prover, for instance, to evaluate the proof in, in that uh, rand randomly selected value, and the prover will respond. So what you can see is an interactive system, interactive proof system. So basically, the, the role of the prover here is to uh, solve a problem for the verifier. Um, <clears throat> What are the requirements? What are the security requirements of an uh, interactive proof system? So, and here we need to fix some notation. Let's say we denote by uh, out uh, V, X, R, and P. And we denote the output of the verifier in this interactive protocol um, input X, who also uses some randomness R and interacts with the deterministic prover P. So, the two uh, security requirements that we are looking for. Uh, into our uh, completeness and uh, soundness. And completeness basically is the same as correctness of a, of a proof system, it means that an honest prover can convince a verifier to accept the proof after some small uh, completeness error. And the soundness property means that if uh, the prover is dishonest and tries to convince a verifier to accept the proof, then this should in a normal case, that will happen with negligible probability. So in, in an uh, IP system, uh, this uh, is smaller than a third. Okay, now the question is, uh, what is an argument system? I, I talked about a prover system, and you probably uh, have seen that I didn't say anything about the computational power of the prover. So in, in an argument system, we assume that in contrast to the interactive proofs, new systems, the soundness property, soundness property is, is the property where a dishonest prover tries to convince a verifier. Soundness property holds only against computationally bounded provers in an argument system. So we assume that the provers are computationally bounded and run in polynomial time. So basically here again, uh, this is an, an overview of how we uh, transform an informa information theoretic proof system such as, such as IP, uh, MIP, PCP into an argument system just by uh, uh, combining it with a cryptographic proof system where we assume that the actors in the cryptographic proof systems are computationally bounded. So the verifier is computationally bounded. That's how we obtain an um, argument system. And uh, so in the in the in the title, I, I mentioned ZK SNARKs. So SNARKs actually stands for succinct non-interactive argument of knowledge. Yeah, argument system basically. So argument now we, uh, we have found out uh, means that the uh, uh, the computation uh, the power the running power of the prover is computationally bounded. Uh, zero knowledge. We uh, we will later see what that means. Uh, succinctness means that the proof is much smaller than the uh, than in, in, in the classical case, but uh, what still is missing is the non uh, non interactivity. So we have seen in the in the interactive proof system, of course, there is some interaction between the prover and the verifier. But uh, if you look at the verifier, at the role of the verifier in the interactive proof system, then we see that the role of the verifier is just to to choose some uh, random values and to challenge the, the prover, right? So actually, we can also get uh, get rid of the verifier by replacing the verifier by uh, by a random oracle. So basically, we can uh, the, the random oracle can be uh, simulated by a hash function. Basically, the the role of the verifier can be done by the prover uh, herself, right? She can just run a hash function on some random values and in this way, compute the randomnesses, um, which would represent the randomnesses of the verifier in, in the interactive proof system. 
And the was a, a, a technique which is called the Fiat Chamber Transformation, which was introduced in uh, 1986. And this Fiat Chamber Transformation exactly describes this scenario where the role of the verifier is, is replaced by a hash function. <clears throat> and uh, this is how we obtain a non interactive proof system. Okay. Um, What are uh, zero knowledge proof systems? So here again, I'm showing you an interactive proof system. Um, we know that it can make uh, it can be made non-interactive, um, but um, what we are interested right now is in this uh, property which is called zero knowledge. So we assume here here is a protocol which is run between the prover and the verifier. The prover uh, makes a statement in the first uh, in the first step. Then the verifier challenges the prover, and the, the and, and the prover responds with, uh, with some uh, with some value. Um, so the two security guarantees which have to be guaranteed by uh, any proof system or, or argument system are the two which I already mentioned: completeness and soundness. Right? So completeness means that uh, um, a prover who knows the witness, who knows the secret, will uh, always convince the verifier of some small. Uh, um, uh, completeness error. And the soundness property means that a dishonest prover who doesn't know the secret can only convince the ver verifier with a very small degree of probability. And zero knowledge means that from this public transcript, which is publicly known to, to everyone, this public transcript could not reveal anything about the secret to, to the verifier or any, any other uh, third person. <clears throat> Okay, and I I want to show how uh, we can construct the snacks from those different uh, proof systems, uh, from I IP, from uh, IOP, and um, first I would like to start with uh, this interactive proof system. So let's look at the following scenario. We assume that um, Bob and uh, Alice they hold two files, which are um, strings of n entries, each of them. And they uh, want to know if their files are equal. And uh, what they would like to, to have is also to uh, minimize their communication. And an idea to minimize the communication is just uh, down as false. We assume that Alice speaks a collision resistant hash function from the hash family, uh, which depends on some random uh, value r. So basically, r is picked from uh, the finite field f e. And the hash function is it's just a polynomial in R with the coefficients uh, where the coefficients represent the uh, uh, string of values. <clears throat> so she uh, she computes the value uh, v, um, which is h r of a. So basically, this polynomial uh, evaluated in R in the um, random value r, and she sends that uh, value v at r to to Bob. The book knows and that um, uh, we, we, we are working with a hash function, which is a polynomial of degree n minus one. And uh, Bob also received the value r. So basically, Bob evaluates the hash function in the value r and compares whether uh, using uh, his own coefficients uh, from uh, his own vector uh, from his own file and compares whether this is equal to v the evaluation value of Alice. Okay, um, yeah, uh, each hash function interprets its input uh, as the coefficients of a degree n minus one polynomial and uh, outputs the uh, polynomial which is evaluated at R. So if, the, if there is even one value, uh, uh, one index i, where the two uh, inputs in the, in the files are different, then both will output uh, not equal. Um, Bob will abort this probability at least one minus <laughs> So what we have seen uh, is that in this case, Alice doesn't need to send the entire string, right? Doesn't need to send all those n values to Bob. It is enough if she just sends the value v and r to Bob. <clears throat> okay, and uh, so what is also in, in, uh, interesting to see when we build uh, the case now, then um, we will see that there is some uh, relation to uh, error correction calls. 
and uh, how this uh, relation looks like, uh, looks like is as follows. So, so let's look at these two polynomials of degree n minus one, uh, p a of x and p b of, uh, of x, which are uh, two polynomials in, uh, in x, of degree n minus one. And uh, to the protocol presented on the previous slide between Alice and Bo, we, uh, we actually can refer as the uh, reed solomon uh, fingerprinting. Because uh, P A of R is a random entry in an uh, error correcting encoding of the vector A of Alice. This is also known as the uh, reed solomon encoding. Uh, what is important to know about uh, the um, encoding system is that the encoding is distance uh, amplifying. So basically, the, the encoding of a vector A is, will be a much larger vector. So we basically interpret A as some specified specify polynomial P A with coefficients, uh, with these coefficients A1 to A L, the polynomial is of degree N minus one. And uh, for each uh, value of from P, the R entry of the encoding is defined as P I of R. So basically, if uh, this is our string A, we uh, can define the corresponding Ritz-Solomon uh, encoding by uh, identifying the corresponding polynomial where uh, the entries of this vector of A describe the coefficients of the polynomial. And then all the variations of this polynomial from the field over the field FP will give us the encoding of A. And so what is it? Um, what, what, what is interesting to see that if A and B differ uh, even in a single uh, coordinate, then their encodings will uh, will, dif uh, will differ on a one minus n minus one over p fraction of coordinates. So due to this uh, distance amplifying uh, nature of the reed solomon codes, it's enough if Alice would send only a single random entry of the encoding of her vector of A to Bob. And then Bob will compare the corresponding uh, entry of B's encoding. Okay, so um, what can we say about the simple uh, protocol which we have seen on the previous page? Checking the equality of two vectors can be reduced to checking uh, the equality of a single, vector, uh, single entry of the encoding. Okay, yeah. Uh, just to summarize, uh, what I mentioned in this slide is that the reed solomon encoding of a vector A interprets A as the coefficients of a univariate polynomial of degree n minus one. However, it is uh, possible to view those coefficients as the evaluations of a univariate polynomial of degree n minus one over some canonical set. And this is possible, uh, it is possible to derive a Lagrangian correlation for uh, univariate polynomials. How do we define uh, univariate Lagrange uh, interpolation? So let's assume P uh, be a prime uh, which is larger, much larger than n, and if P uh, be the field of integers modulo n, then for any vector A from FP, there exists a uni univariate polynomial QA of degree at most n minus one, such that QA evaluated that A is equal to A i plus one. So QA can also be expressed in terms of Lagrange polyno uh, basis polynomials, and Lagrange basis polynomials are computed like that. So basically, QA of X can be expressed using um, this formulation, using Lagrange basis polynomials. So if you uh, look at this representation from the codex theoretic view, we can say that QA is, uh, we know that QA is called the root degree extension. This, uh, this is another tool which we, uh, which we use in constructing um, ZK snacks from IPs or IPs. So um, let LDE of A be a vector of length P, which is uh, the cardinality of FP, whose i entry is defined as QA of I. So if P is much larger than N, then the low degree extension is large, uh, vastly longer than A itself. Interactive proofs and uh, the corresponding snarks which we derive from those proofs exploit uh, the following property of uh, polynomials. 
And uh, this property now is defined in uh, terms of multivariate polynomials. So we, uh, I will also uh, show you later that uh, use, working with multivariate polynomials gives us actually much more efficient interactive proof systems and also much more efficient the snacks. We are exploiting is the Schwarz Zibrilleva is defined as follows. So let f be any field and uh, g be a function from fm to f, which uh, divide, uh, defines a non zero m variant polynomial of the degree at most d. Then on any finite subset s of f, the probability that g of x equals to zero is at most d over the cardinality of s. It, it, it tells us basically that any two distinct polynomials of top of degree at most t can agree on at most d over the cardinality of s fraction of points in s. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I have talked now about multivariate polynomials, and uh, similar to, to univariate polynomials, we can also define the uh, low degree extensions of uh, multivariate polynomials. And um, the uh, corresponding low degree ex extensions of multivariate polynomials are defined also in terms of the uh, basis polynomials as follows. And uh, what is so interesting about multilinear extensions and multi uh, um, multivariate polynomials is that uh, they ensure a fast prover, small communication, and fast verification. And uh, one of the most widely used interactive proof systems is the uh, so-called flam check protocol, which was introduced by Lan Portnoff and Karloff in 1992. And uh, this is what I want to give you an uh, idea of how uh, such a protocol looks like. So the sum check protocol. So suppose there is a, a new variate polynomial G, which is defined over a finite field F. And the prover, the prover uh, provides the verifier with the following sum H, which is the sum of that function, a multivariate function G, which is defined in a new um, uh, variables. And the claim, so we can basically um, look at the very simple ex uh, example. Um, the, the prover goes to uh, provide the verifier with the following sum. Um, the sum of the function G, which is defined only in two, uh, in two variables, B1 and B, um, B2. And B1 uh, or and B2 are um, bits. So but basically the sum will be uh, G0,0 plus G0,1 plus G1,0 plus G11, right? So the claim of the prover is that uh, the prover knows some value, which the sum uh, equates to. So basically the claim is that H is equal to C1. This will be the first um, the first message sent sent, sent to the verifier, and uh, the following polynomial G one. So basically, uh, what the prover does, the prover fixes the first variable in the polynomial, and then evaluates the remaining polynomials, um, replaces the remain and the remaining variables by the corresponding uh, values. So now again, in our example, the first message. So if you only look into a um, bivariate polynomial. In our example, the first method G1 of X1 would be G uh, would be G of uh, X10 plus uh, G of uh, X11, right? <clears throat> so this is also sent to the to the verifier, and the verifier now has to check that C1 is equal to G1 of 0 plus G1 of 1. And th th this is true, right? Again, in our, in, in our simplified example, G of X1, uh, 0 plus G of X1, 1. This is equal to G1 of X1. If you evaluate it first in 0, that will give us G of 0, 0 plus G of 0, 1. If you evaluate it uh, G1 of 1, that will give us G of 1, 0 plus G of 1, 1. So this is exactly equal to C1. Okay, so this is the uh, idea behind that. And then uh, what the verifier does in the next step it chooses some random value from the final field R1, sends it to the verifier, uh, to the prover, and now the prover has to embed this challenging value in, uh, in her response. 
So now she replaces the first variable in her new response um, by the uh, received value R1. She fixes the second variable to X2 and then evaluates the polynomial in the remaining variables. And uh, this is then sent to, uh, to the verifier. Again, the verifier checks now uh, G1 of, um, that G1 of R1 is equal to G2 of 0 plus G2 of, of, of 1. That works in exactly the same as in B. Uh, we'll be convinced. Uh, choose uh, another challenging value, send it to, to the verifier, and to one to one. So basically, at the uh, second last round, the prover has received from the verifier new minus one um, challenging values request. So the, the, the polynomial G, G new of X new is just uh, the polynomial G where the first uh, two coefficients, uh, the, the first two variables are replaced by uh, R1 to R new minus one, and the last uh, variable is, is fixed to X new. Okay, so the, uh, what the uh, verifier does is then check, uh, runs the last check, and then it chooses R new and uh, queries the oracle on, on the function G, evaluates G in all, all the values R1 to R new, and checks that G new of R new is equal to that evaluated polynomial. So this is an interactive uh, 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 proof, which is the uh, sum check protocol, which is used uh, again in many uh, zk snark constructions. This idea is used in many zk snark constructions. And um, so it's probably important to say about the uh, communication complexity of this uh, protocol. So there is a uh, one round in this in this subject protocol for each of the variables v of the polynomial g. And um, so basically, what we can say that uh, the total uh, the total prover to ver verify communication is a uh, new plus the uh, sum over the uh, degree of g in the ice variable. And the total uh, verifier to prove our communication is a new field elements. Basically, the uh, random chosen values which are sent from the verifier to the prover. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. So, so far, we haven't considered the zero knowledge part. No, no, we are not considering it. So, this is only the, uh, the um, information theoretical proof system. But still, yeah. they are instantiated in the way that they are, they are secure, right? Yeah. So what is the like? This? So this multivariate is a little bit more complicated. But what is the assumption for the first one? Uh, which one? Oh yeah, for the first uh, yeah for the linear for the univariate system. Um, yeah. What is the hardest assumption like this? Oh, is it information security? It's information security. No, this is only the I'm only talking about the information uh, secure proof system. I see. Not about okay. snarks. Okay, no, not zero knowledge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will show later okay. uh, uh, the snark construction. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so what else I want to uh, uh, to talk about is uh, how do we build interactive proof systems? Again, I'm not talking about uh, cryptographic proofs at the moment, right? I'm only talking about uh, information theoretic proof systems. So uh, it is important to construct and um, to consider the interactive proof system for um, the uh, circuit satisfiability problem. And um, so let phi be a Boolean formula on n variables of uh, size s. And the goal is to compute the um, number of satisfying uh, assignments of Phi, so basically to compute the sum of phi of x over x, where x runs over uh, bits, uh, over, uh, over vectors of size n, over binary vectors of size n. So the the uh, uh, solution, possible solution to uh, solve this problem is now to apply the sum check protocol, which you have seen on the previous uh, page, to compute uh, to compute basically the sum by identifying a polynomial extension G of phi of uh, total degree, which is polynomial in S, such that, which ensures that the following equality is satisfied. Uh, So how uh, the question is how can we turn a uh, boolean for, formula into an arithmetic uh, circuit over that final field? 
which would compute that uh, polynomial extension. And uh, th this is just a very simple example, so that the uh, end gate of two inputs x and y is just the multiplication of the two inputs, the OR gate of the two inputs is x plus y minus um, the product of x and y, and the NOT gate is just 1 minus x. Okay, and uh, yeah, to check the approval's final message, the verifier must evaluate uh, the polynomial extension g of r for some randomly chosen value uh, by, the, by the verifier. Okay, uh, the uh, ZK SNAR constructions are usually, uh, most of the ZK SNAR constructions, especially the lattice based ones, are uh, constructed based on the so called uh, rank one constraint system um, problem, a satisfiability problem. And this is defined as follows. So uh, assume we are given three matrices, A, B, and C. Uh, M times N matrices A, B, and C with entries from a finite field F. Then we say that this constraint system is satisfiable if and only if there exists a vector Z where the uh, first entry of this vector is fixed to be equal to one. Why this is the case? So we usually fix the first entry to one because otherwise a zero vector could just easily give us a solution for this problem. Such that this is satisfied. <clears throat> So we have a, a matrix vector product, and here we have a point wise multiplication. Uh, so the, um, is it my computer? So okay, the, uh, the rank one constraint system as uh, uh, satisfiability instance uh, will have one constraint for each entry of the public input X to, to the circuit, zero for each entry of the uh, witness W. <laughs> To, to the circuit and one for each eternal gate and two for each output gate. I'm sorry, the, yeah. the circle is entry wise multiplication. Uh, this is entry wise multiplication. Yeah, so okay. two, two vectors, ah, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so basically, on, on the left hand side, we have a vector, and on the right hand side, we have a vector. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, I probably should just sh should uh, show you the example how we uh, construct such uh, R one CS um, instance for the following uh, circuit. So uh, uh, assume we have the following inputs W one, W two, W three, and then um, this is now uh, translated into the following coordinates uh, of the Z vector. Is that one that was at 203 are the inputs to, uh, to the circuit? Uh, four is the output of this gate, that five is the output of this gate of this addition gate, and that six is the output of that multiplication gate. So, and uh, how do we build the constraint in the uh, R1CS, which would ensure uh, addition of two inputs? So basically, uh, when we look at this scenario here, let uh, J be the entry of Z, and ZJ denote the sum of the two entries to this addition gate, then uh, the J's row, uh, row of A will be the standard basis vector E1, and the J's row of B will be EJ prime plus EJ prime prime, and the J's row of C will be EJ. So basically, the J's constant constraint in the rank one CS instance ensures that the J prime plus the J prime prime minus that J is equal to zero. And uh, similarly, uh, we can uh, derive a constraint for our multiplication gate for our, uh, the corresponding R1 CS constraint. Uh, again, if you assume that ZJ is the product of two entries to that uh, multiplication gate, like here. Then this row of matrix A, so this is our matrix A, this is our matrix B, this is our matrix C. The J row of matrix A uh, will be the standard basis vector E J. The J row of matrix B will be the uh, uh, basis vector E J prime prime, and the J row of C will be equal to E J. So basically, the J constraint constraint in the R 
one CS will ensure that the product of this uh, the J, uh, J prime is a J prime prime and the J is equal to zero. Okay, um, so th this is a very simple example to see how we uh, can uh, build the constraints of the R1CS constraint system for a given arithmetic circuit. And uh, this uh, rank one constraint system, I will uh, refer later when I will talk about uh, the instructions of, um, of ZK SNARKs. But um, first, I want to clear also the idea. Um, how do we, um, so when we have this um, interactive proof system and we want to build a um, non interactive uh, ZK SNARK, basically, uh, SNARK, or ZK SNARK is not always automatically guaranteed. So if you just want to obtain non interactive argument system, then um, the idea is to apply the Fiat-Schmidt transform. So basically, as we have seen, the, the, um, the received values from the verifier will be replaced by the uh, random oracle R, which is uh, uh, simulated by a collision resistant dash function. And um, what that means to us that um, what we can see right now, the, the interaction has been removed from that interactive flow system, and uh, the uh, random values can now be computed by the prover herself. <clears throat> so basically, what we can uh, say here, the um, the security of the underlying uh, of the uh, obtained ZK, ZK snark will rely on the. Uh, Collision resistant of, of our hash function. Yeah. So now uh, a little bit, uh, a few more words. How do we uh, move from uh, IPs, from interactive proofs, to succinct non interactive arguments? And uh, we say that an argument system for circuit satisfiability is succinct if the uh, total communication is. Sublinear in the size of the witness who uh, the circuit. And the uh, circuit satisfiability problem in the arithmetic circuit satisfiability problem, the circuit C takes two inputs the public input and the witness, access to public input, um, the, uh, W is the witness. And uh, the problem is to um, determine. So given the public input and the output of the circuit, the problem is to determine whether there exists such a witness such that this uh, equation is satisfied. The verification time of a SNARK is much smaller than in the uh, naive proof, where the prover sends the witness to the verifier and the uh, verifier ev would evaluate the circuit on its own. And a uh, cryptographic technique for the transformation of an interactive proof system into a SNARK, into a cryptographic proof, basically is to use a commission scheme. Um, yeah, is to use a, a commitment scheme. And using a polynomial, for instance, a polynomial commitment scheme, uh, the prover can avoid sending the entire witness to the verifier. That this already uh, reduces the uh, size of the proof, right? A cryptographic commitment scheme consists of two phases. In the first phase, the uh, prover will commit to the secret. And then in the second phase, the uh, prover can reveal the secret such that the verifier can check that the commitment the prover uh, committed to in the first phase was correctly computed. Um, so that, this is the idea. So uh, by using a polynomial commitment scheme, so basically the prover will commit to a polynomial of a degree. And uh, the idea is that the, uh, the prover chooses a low degree polynomial P, um, which is bounded by some uh, parameter uh, P. And the commitment is, well, for the polynomial commitment is just the uh, particular commitment uh, to uh, this uh, low degree polynomial. The uh, verifier can again challenge the, the prover by choosing some random value, and the, the prover can evaluate this polynomial and uh, send the evaluated polynomial to the verifier. 
Polynomial commitment schemes, uh, which are used to transform an IP into a stack, usually make use of, uh, of two um, underlying building blocks of the Merkle tree and uh, of Merkle trees and low degree tests. In order to construct a polynomial commitment from a Merkle tree, uh, the prover would commit to a polynomial P by committing to the uh, string of all evaluations of this polynomial in um, w, uh, w1 to Wn. So basically how this Merkle tree is uh, computed, all the evaluations of this polynomial are put as the leaves of the Merkle tree. And then by applying the hash function to two of the uh, evaluations, we will obtain the corresponding parent node and so on and so on. <clears throat> so the verifier can ask the prover for uh, revealing some of uh, the evaluations of this Merkle tree. And the, replier, uh, and the prover will reply with this uh, value along with the authentication path. The authentication path, which basically leads to the root of the Merkle tree. Um, so just by using this uh, idea, using this Merkle tree commitment, uh, it is not enough uh, for obtaining a, 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 an efficient um, SNARK, the single non-interactive algorithm of knowledge. And the problem is that uh, just by applying this Merkle tree does not uh, 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 give, uh, give us an efficient polynomial commitment scheme because we just have no guarantee that the string is equal to all relations of some multilinear polynomials. So we need to add a low degree test, which will address this issue. Basically, the receiver is given uh, Oracle access to a giant string, which uh, contains all the evaluations of an m variate function over f. And the low degree test allows to determine if s is consistent with a low degree polynomial, just by looking at the tiny fraction of the symbols within the giant string s. OK. Um, um, another, uh, another way of constructing the KSNARKs is to construct the KSNARKs from probabilistic uh, checkable proof systems. And the uh, uh, idea and the definition of probabilistic, uh, probabilistic, probabilistically checkable uh, proof systems is defined for a uh, uh, language L. And uh, the PCP is, uh, consists of a verifier who is given access to, uh, to an input X and uh, is also given access to, uh, to an oracle, which can compute the uh, proof string for the verifier. We say that the uh, PCP has complete, uh, completeness error, delta C and, and thousand error delta S. If again, the following two properties are satisfied, completeness and soundness. And completeness and soundness are defined uh, similar to the IP system. And there are some differences. When we want to compile a PCP into a succinct argument system, uh, in contrast to the uh, compilation of an IP into a, a succinct uh, argument system. So the, the, the main differences are the following. We don't use any uh, low degree tests in, uh, in this construction. Uh, we, so basically in the, uh, in the transformation from, from, from an interactive proof system, we use the polynomial commitment scheme, which made use of a Merkle tree commitment and a low degree test. And then by applying the pr shamir transform, we will obtain a succinct non-interactive argument system, right? Here we are using another transformation technique, um, which um, doesn't make use. Uh, it's the so-called Helian transformation, and it uh, only uses Merkle tree uh, commitment scheme. And in the end, we can again apply the Pierre Schmidt transformation to obtain a non-interactive argument system, succinct argument system. So this is just uh, an idea. Uh, a slide to give you an idea that we can again construct SNARKs from PCPs, not only from IPs. And uh, it is interesting to see that uh, by combining uh, interactive proof systems with uh, PCPs, we obtain interactive oracle proofs. And interactive, in, in an interactive oracle proof, um, in each round, um, the verifier is not forced to read the entire proof message. Uh, it's really just a, a 
small part of the proof of message, and, and just by uh, already, uh, analyzing the small part of the proof of message, the verifier can already decide whether the verifier will accept the proof or not. Okay, and uh, how do we obtain succinct arguments via uh, from uh, IOPs, from interactive oracle proofs? And the idea is to design a polynomial uh, IOP for uh, circuit satisfiability or the R1CS satisfiability uh, problem, where each special message which, which is sent from the prover to the verifier is uh, specified by a polynomial HI or pro degree. The degree of the polynomial should be upper bound by some value di. Then uh, in the second step, we replace each of those messages which are sent from the prover to the verifier with a polynomial commitment scheme. And in the end, we apply a fiat uh, transformation to remove the interaction between uh, the prover and the verifier. Um, I think I don't have that much time. Therefore, let me see what I want to tell you. Yeah, I will skip probably two slides, but. Um, but I uh, still want to talk about this slide. So the uh, the key fact of the uh, construction is uh, is the relation uh, between the sum of any low degree polynomial over a potentially large subset of inputs H to the uh, polynomial variation at a single point zero. So basically, um, uh, we can say that uh, if you are given a finite field F, and we suppose that H is a multiplicative uh, subgroup of that finite field F of side N. Then uh, for any polynomial P, there, uh, the following relation holds. The sum of the P uh, of A is equal to P of zero times N. And of course, it follows that the sum of P of A is equal to zero, even only if P of zero is equal to zero. And uh, so let H be a multiplicative subgroup of F and P be any univariate polynomial of degree at most T. Then uh, the vanishing polynomial of H is defined by the following product. So this uh, polynomial vanishes on uh, H. And um, so in order to construct a polyno uh, polynomial IOP, and, uh, we uh, would need to construct a univariate sum check protocol where the prover will would send two special uh, messages which would specify F and H. And then the verifier will uh, confirm um, the right and the uh, left hand side of uh, this equation just by evaluating this uh, equation at a random point R. So here I wanted to um, draw your attention of uh, constructing IOP, uh, IOPs, uh, ZK snacks from uh, IOPs of proximity. And uh, one of the uh, currently existing um, SNARKs from IOPPs, or one of the currently existing uh, IOPP, Interactive Oracle Proof of Proximity, is the so-called TRI protocol. It's the Far Street uh, Solomon Interactive Oracle Proof of Proximity, which was um, constructed in 2018. And the idea is, uh, of this IOPP protocol is uh, closely related to uh, uh, Reed-Solomon encoding. So let D be a specified uh, degree bound, and the proof's first message is specified by a function from um, some carefully chosen subset L0 to F, the final field. The prover claims that the degree of this uh, polynomial G is upper bounded by some, uh, by some D. And um, equivalently, we can also see that G is actually a code word of the, in, in the Ritz uh, Solomon encoding of degree D. So how do we choose L0? L0 is chosen to have size uh, D over uh, rho, where uh, rho is the rate of the rate of the code. And uh, the finite field has to be significant, significantly bigger than L0. And uh, the message size of the, of the prover has to be lower bounded by uh, the cardinality of L0. Uh, so basically, the uh, reminder uh, of, the, uh, of the protocol of, of pride is just an uh, of right price and uh, interactive protocol proof of proximity. The reminder of the protocol is now based on, uh, it's just an IOP, an interactive protocol proof with the following um, security guarantee. 
for some specified parameter, which is the decoding radius of the Ritz Roman code in the interval from zero to one minus square root of rho. Right? So our IVP guarantees that the verifier accepts. If the verifier accepts the proof, then with overwhelming probability, the polynomial G is within of a relative distance delta, some polynomial P. And the number of points are for which the polynomial G of R is different. The polynomial P of R is at most delta times the cardinality of L0. Um, so what is uh, interesting here, uh, one of my research papers is based on this approach of designing uh, ZK snarks from uh, interactive Oracle proofs. And um, what we uh, have discovered uh, when uh, doing the investigation in this direction is that the prover runtime is mainly determined by the rate by the rate of the uh, read normal code row. Basically, the smaller row is chosen, the longer the prover's message in the IOP, and the bigger is the time of the prover to generate those messages. So, uh, and we also have determined that the uh, soundness error. So we want the soundness error in order to achieve the soundness uh, property of R uh, is not to be as small as possible. And we uh, have determined that the soundness error um, directly depends on the uh, decoding radius. So our idea uh, in, in our new, new approach is to not just use the read Solomon codes as they are, but the um, all the read Solomon codes, which has a decoding radius up to one minus rho. <clears throat> okay, I now want to give a, a brief idea of ZK snarks from linear PCPs. And um, the, the, uh, this is another uh, topic we uh, have worked on, uh, I and my uh, collaborators. And so this um, uh, linear PCP was introduced by Ishai Kushilevitz and Kostrovsky. And uh, the proof structure of a linear PCP exploits the linearity, uh, linearity property. So the, basically, the proof is interpreted as a linear uh, function, as a function which maps f, uh, f to the new to f for some integer new. And the proof is basically a linear function which has to satisfy uh, the following properties for two uh, given queries received from the from the verifier and for two constants uh, d1 and d2 um, this homomorphic pro property additive homomorphic property has to be used it is satisfied the security guarantee of that uh, linear pcp is that at the end of the commit phase there is some function p prime such that if the uh, verifier checks all paths and P cannot break the underlying crypto system in the protocol, then uh, the prover's answer in the uh, reveal phase are consistent with P prime. So the used crypto system in uh, in the construction of ZK star is an uh, NCP secure homomorphic encryption scheme. And um, okay, here's the definition of a homomorphic secure encryption scheme. Uh, this I might skip. The idea of a linear PCP works as follows. Okay, um, the, uh, now the protocol starts on the verifier side. The verifier starts the protocol by choosing uh, random values R1 to R new and computes the encryption of those random values by applying a homomorphic uh, crypto system and then sends basically the, those encryptions to, to the prover and also sends uh, new queries to the prover. The prover selects a vector t, uh, which are uh, field elements, d1 to d uh, new, such that the proof of the query vector can be computed as the uh, inner product of uh, d and q by exploiting the gain to homomorphic property. And then the encryption of the uh, Pi of R. So basically, uh, Pi of R uh, is the proof on the uh, on the uh, uh, randomness vector R. But remember, the uh, prover has not received the randomness vector R from the verifier. What the prover has received are the encryptions of the randomness vector. So 
But again, we're exploiting the uh, homomorphic properties. We know that the encryption of pi of r is equal to the encryption of the sum of ti times ri. And it's equal to the sum of ti times the encryption of ri. So basically, the prover can use the encryptions of uh, receive, which he received from the uh, verifier and uh, compute the corresponding proof for this uh, vector r. So what is sent to the verifier are the encryptions of uh, pi of r. And the verifier can decrypt and obtain the corresponding proof on R on the uh, on the random vector that was chosen by the verifier. Okay, then uh, the protocol, the entire protocol consists of these two phases and the reveal phase. In the reveal phase, uh, prover uh, sends another k queries to uh, the verifier and uh, selects uh, k uh, random values, which are field elements computes that value Q star. And again, the prover, uh, again, by using the, 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 uh, exploiting the homomorphic property of the underlying encryption scheme, the prover can compute the corresponding proofs on those queries and the uh, corresponding proof on Q star. And then the verifier basically checks that uh, A star is equal to uh, this sum. Um, yeah, I know that I probably don't have uh, the time to uh, show you the details, uh, the exact details of a linear of a SNARK, which was um, built from a linear PCP for a rank one uh, constraint system, a satisfiability problem. Therefore, um, I can only give you an idea what uh, was used in this protocol or uh, by linear maps. So basically, um, the uh, final snark um, was just a bunch of um, of linear um, maps elements sent to the verifier, and what the verifier had to do is to run the verification equations by exploiting the uh, uh, multiplicative property of linear maps, and uh, could uh, accept the proof. However, um, this simple construction. Uh, the, the, by applying um, linear maps uh, gave us a succinct non-interactive argument of knowledge. However, this was not uh, zero knowledge. It didn't achieve the property of zero knowledgeness because uh, the proof contained uh, the encodings of, of some particular function of that, which was evaluated at, at various points. And um, Z, was a satisfying assign assignment for the rank one CS constraint, uh, constraint uh, instance, which would leak some information to the verifier about that S. The idea to make this construction zero knowledge was to uh, add some perturbation to, uh, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the equations. I, I know I'm going now very quickly through this because I just realized that there was just too much content on, on it. And um, I just only wanted to uh, give you an idea on the current stand uh, of CK snarks from LPCP. The, um, the, 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 um, the construction I presented on the previous uh, slide was DK uh, snark uh, where the security was based on, pair on pairings. And, and there exists uh, there exist already two uh, lattice, uh, three lattice-based constructions, including our work, uh, which are uh, all based on lattices. So the security of the uh, obtaining snark is uh, based on the uh, security of the underlying crypto system. The crypto system we were using is is uh, a modi modified version of the GSW uh, homomorphic encryption scheme. Uh, as I said, I will have probably later this semester another seminar where, where I will be only focusing on this construction. We uh, basically uh, were using a modified version of the uh, GSW homomorphic encryption scheme, which only had achieved the additive uh, homomorphic, homomorphic property. Uh, we define some new renormalization techniques uh, for this homomorphic encryption scheme. And what I can see, we managed in the, in the end to achieve a, a much better size of the, um, 
of the authentic SNARC. By the way, uh, this is not a fair uh, comparison here of that paper ISW because the uh, zero knowledge property was guaranteed only for a very small uh, zero knowledge uh, parameter, per, uh, uh, security parameter. So basically, uh, if you would compare it uh, corresponding to our, uh, to our choices of parameters, their proof sizes would be uh, somewhere around, uh, somewhere around 30 uh, kilobytes. Um, okay, so um, the um, motivation and idea of this talk was to uh, give you an idea of how we can construct ZK snarks from different um, proof systems, uh, IPs, PCPs, IOPs, and uh, LPCPs. And um, yeah, probably at some later talk, I can give you a more complete uh, talk on our um, complete construction of uh, lattice based ZK snark. Yeah, hopefully, we'll accept it. This LPCP, you only need a DT home model. Right? In this LPCP, in the especially in this map, pi, you only need a DT home model. Right? You only need a DT home of his. Yeah. So the, the reason why you put that is really just for the corresponding part. Main motivation. The main motivation of using practices, yes, we uh, for to achieve post quantum uh, guarantee. Yeah. yeah. And so I so technically, like you can do this from RSA, right? We could do it from RSA, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, yeah. And um, I, I just efficient of the of the bilinear map. Yeah, I mean, this was just one research area where uh, cryptographers wanted to achieve an from lattices. And it seems at the moment it's the only option where you can construct uh, a map from lattices by using this LPCP approach. For instance, the IOP approach, as I mentioned, uses a polynomial commitment scheme. And I know there is now this new paper on polynomial, a uh, lattice based polynomial commitment scheme okay. by uh, V and Wu. It might open new ways for constructing you know, lattice based ZK snarks for my IPs. But like, at the moment, it's the only approach to achieve lattice based ZK snarks. Anybody in the audience? Any other questions? Anybody? Who is Ian? Morgan? The head is good. Okay. okay, so thank you again. Refreshment here. Yeah, we're going to catch up for the next project. Oh, yeah, so we should, uh, I should, uh, I should send you an email. So, okay. Uh, I think uh, I'm happy to try to see all the details. I think I'm okay with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Happy to spend the time. We've been talking about machine learning. Oh, okay. I know, but at the end, uh, what we really do is that's the solution. But uh, we we want to implement that particular step of how to do it. Yeah. Right. I don't think that's too difficult. Maybe at some point time we can we can have a meeting to see. But 